Hi, welcome to Eye Openers. I'm your host, Brittany Drozd, and each week I bring you insightful conversations with entrepreneurs that will help you make more money, become a strong leader, and build a business culture that you're proud of. Grab your coffee and let's dive in. Hey guys, and thanks for joining me today on Eye Openers. We are having a little bit of a change of plans, but that's okay. You see, I still have my coffee, my eye-opening beverage of choice, and I'm rolling here. I've been diving into ideas, having great calls with clients already, and there is such a key theme that keeps showing up here, and I wanted to take this opportunity to chat with you guys about it. And the theme that I am seeing come up over and over again is one of commitment. Commitment to yourself, commitment to your business, commitment to doing things differently in order to get the results you're really looking for. And this is where I see so many people come up short. And I'm not going to blame anybody else. I will start by giving you guys an example of how I have come up short in my own life. Um, someone who's probably going to see this video, an excellent, really friend, but client of mine, she was helping me improve my nutrition and my exercise, which is something deeply important to me. I feel like it really helps me be successful in so many areas of my life by just improving my health and fitness. And she had put together a really challenging plan for me. And for those of you who know me, you know, I love food. I just love food. I have been blessed with genetics that I can eat a lot of the food I really want. And, and in some ways that's really held me back. It's allowed my narrative to be that I, I didn't need to commit to eating certain ways, but I wanted to shift that. I realized I was really limiting my own view of myself, my own view of my potential of who I, how I really wanted to show up in the world, what, how I really wanted to create and see myself by giving myself the story of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like seriously disciplined and committed in all these other areas of my life. But when it comes to eating, I just want to eat whatever I want. And it kind of dawned on me one day, I'm like, this is kind of immature. Like, I really want to challenge myself to see this differently. And you might be like, uh, this is a business podcast. Why is Brittany talking about food right now? Because I want to use, I want to use a disruptor for you. I want to use something that is seriously relatable to everybody. We all eat. And I'm sure we've all thought about the food we're eating at some point in time. I want to pull that back into how you commit to things. So I knew I wanted to do something different. I really, really, really wanted to challenge the way that I saw myself through the food that I was eating. And it took a lot. It took a lot for me to decide to face that head on. But I knew if I asked my clients to do challenging things, which I do all the time, then how how was I being who and how was I showing up in a way that would be helpful and constructive for them if I wasn't also giving myself these challenging exercises, these ways to provoke my thinking in, in how I see myself differently? And if I don't do that work myself, I can't actually serve my clients at those same levels. So you can only take people as deep as you've gone yourself. And so if I don't make a regular practice out of challenging the way I see myself, challenging narratives that maybe don't serve me anymore and coming up with brand new ways to show up, I can't take clients to that level. So I make this a regular practice for myself. Now, in doing so, I knew I had to be prepared. I knew I had to make changes in my behavior. And I knew that there were going to be challenging moments. So I did my absolute best to prepare for all these things. Yet when things got challenging, when I started feeling uncomfortable, I kind of freaked out. I was asking her questions. Why do I feel this way? I don't like it. You know, and it's so interesting to watch how we behave in those moments of really being uncomfortable. So much of our life is comfortable. I'm literally like sitting in this chair, 
in my cozy house, chatting with you guys behind the safety of a screen. Like there's so much that's comfortable in our life. Our Instacart deliveries, our nice cozy cars that take us places. We are comfortable all the time. You have to be deliberate and intentional about getting uncomfortable. And yet when we do it, it sucks. It is not fun. But how you show up in those moments is everything. Because these are the exact same feelings that come up when you don't like how something is going in your business, when you feel a rejection, when somebody quits that was a star employee and now you're not sure what to do or how to handle it, or you you don't like the direction you see an engagement going. All of these things are kind of uncomfortable and we do a little freak out moment in our brains. Maybe some people freak out real life. That's fine. No, no judgment, but it's how you handle those moments and what are the very next action steps you take when you feel that discomfort that really separates true leaders from people who just own the business. And what I mean is a real leader can sit with that discomfort. A real leader can have the self-awareness to know I'm having this experience what am I going to do about it? How am I going to make this a learning opportunity? How am I going to make this constructive for either myself or my team and move forward? So I have two different examples of how I handled this in my life with this ex- with this food example. So one day I was just following the plan that she was giving me. I felt incredibly uncomfortable. I felt like I needed some sugar to think straight or some story I was telling myself or just something was wrong. Um, But my body was literally going through and experiencing these changes. And I knew that there was going to be some discomfort before I felt good again. Yet sitting in that discomfort really sucked. So um, I decided to take a walk I did something to kind of move my energy, shift my focus, change my environment, literally like what was around me to change that narrative of what I was experiencing. And it's incredible how easily influenced we are and how malleable our experience really is when we try to shift it. So in one moment, I'm sitting in this like discomfort and wondering why I'm doing this in the first place. In the next moment, I'm outside, I'm enjoying the sunshine. I'm having water, like it, I'm not stuck in that experience anymore, but I had to be incredibly intentional about shifting it. And this is where so many times we go wrong. We're stuck. We're always going to be stuck. We don't think about just beyond that experience, how we can make it different. And so we get trapped in almost our worst behavior because when we're feeling uncomfortable, we'll kind of do anything to not feel that discomfort anymore. So we will yell, we will blame, we will point the finger at somebody else. We will not take responsibility. We will do whatever is the easiest path to feel the pleasure again and get rid of the pain. And if you're judging yourself here, don't, because that is literally the way that our brains are wired. They're wired to be pleasure seeking and pain avoidant. And that is how we have survived. Like, hello, if you're touching a hot stove, your brain is like, stop doing that because that's not good. (laughs) And so it's served us in so many ways. But when we are on the growth trajectory, when we are on the path of developing ourselves and being better, some pain is part of that process. Now, I don't necessarily mean it has to be literal pain, but there is going to be some discomfort that is part of that process. And these moments of when it comes up and how you manage it are exactly the experience that you're going for that creates that growth, that expands our ability to manage more. One of my favorite quotes is by Tony Robbins, and he says, the quality of your life is directly related to the amount of uncertainty that you can manage. And so as we expand in that way, as we sit in that discomfort, we're actually expanding our ability to hold more and more of that uncertainty. Like, I'm not sure what's coming next, or this is incredibly uncomfortable. Can I handle more? And we move, we grow into it. And that is how we become that stronger leader. It's not the act of reading the book. It's reading the book and then seeing the moment 
that it's time to do it differently using the wisdom you gain from that book that is where you grow and develop into being that stronger leader. Or it's having the coaching conversation, sitting with the new thought that was provoked, the new insight you see now that you can't unsee. And while in that moment that can be uncomfortable, it's then that, that the next moment of when you act on it, when it happens in your real life, and now is the moment you're called to do something differently. This is where the leaders are made in these very moments. And so back to my food story and my moment there, I had a successful moment where I was able to go for a walk and change the way I felt a little bit, change my environment, change my focus and move past a moment of discomfort. Now I had other times where I was not, and I broke away from the plan I was supposed to be following in order to ease my discomfort, seek a little bit of pleasure. And while there were short-term dopamine gains of feeling good by eating something yummy, I had to sit with the later discomfort of realizing I wasn't as committed as I could have been to my outcomes and to my success. Now, if you ask me, that is way more uncomfortable to face and look at than sitting through a craving or feeling like, oh, I'm hungry and I don't want to be or whatever that in the moment somatic feeling is. And then, so instead I'm faced with, oh my gosh, I have to look at how committed was I really to making this change? I bring this one up for a few reasons. Like I said, hello, who hasn't eaten? We can all relate to food. So I wanted to share examples that I'm sure you've been there in either one of those situations where you had success or where you broke your commitment to something and weren't able to change that behavior pattern. And I'm sure we've had moments like, I know for me, like shame will come up, feeling like an imposter will come up sometimes. And I really like to create space to try to work through that. Now, as much as I want to sit here and tell you I'm able to work through it and it's awesome when I move forward, um, that's not always the case. Like I need, I have a support person I call to help me get back on my horse. I, I also have a reflective writing process that really helps me think through what's happening behind the surface level of what's happening and where are my beliefs tied into that and where do I need to make some of those things different in order to really drive my behavior change. Because you see, here's where this is an eye-opener. Behavior change, whether we're talking about exercise and nutrition or improved leadership or culture change, change management in an organization, is all behavior change. Behavior is ultimately tied to beliefs that we hold about ourselves, about others, about the world. And without exploring who you are, how you show up at that level, the level of your core values and beliefs that you hold, you're not going to be able to successfully change your behavior. And you might be able to divert things, you know, create little like carrots and sticks over here and um, motivations or whatever. And you might see some short-term results, but this is the key difference in really driving who you want to become as a leader, what you want your organization to be, is really getting down into that root origin cause of, who you are, who you are as an individual, who you are as a person, how you want to show up, what you want to be known for. And these are the things ultimately driving how we show up in those spaces. If you want those things to be different, you first need to gain better awareness of what's driving you in the first place. And then understand how did those ideas, belief system values get built? They got built over so much time and some of the most Um, influential periods of our life when we're young, when behavior is being modeled by our family, our parents. But all that being said, we can still make significant changes when we're committed to doing so. So remember when I first opened this up, I was chatting with you about commitment. 
And the one of the key differences I see with people I work with is who has success, who has success in changing the way that they show up in their organization, developing those leadership skills, improving the way their organization is run. It's all about their commitment to that work. In order to better understand your level of commitment, you need to understand the pain you experience, the discomfort you're experiencing in your status quo and looking at, well, what are the consequences? What are the consequences I face either way? If I can successfully make this change or if I can't, when you understand those consequences, what they need for you, it can start to, you can start to see what you'd be willing to do to avoid some of those consequences. And now we're starting to look at commitment. How serious are you about making some of those changes? That is where the money is. That is where the secret sauce of understanding your commitment and what you're willing to do about it. And that is ultimately what will drive that behavior change. I would love to hear from you guys. I would love to hear how has this provoked new thinking for you, driven an insight? Have you had an eye-opening experience? Or where has this shown up in the past in your life? And how did you manage it? All of those things can be incredibly helpful in understanding your own journey and where you're headed. Thank you guys so much for watching. Now for more videos, for more eye-opener uh, interviews coming up, please make sure to like our page here and wherever you're seeing this. If you are subscribed on YouTube, if you follow us on LinkedIn, you can also get all of these episodes on wherever you like to listen to your podcast. So make sure you're subscribing either on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. You can also find all of these along with show notes on my website at brittanydros.com. I love hearing from you guys. So please reach out and let's have a conversation. Thanks so much. Thanks for joining us this week on Eye Openers. Make sure to visit brittanydrows.com slash podcast for this week's show notes. And if you found value in today's episode, I would so appreciate you giving us a rating on Apple Podcasts or share it with a friend. Also, don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. This all helps to support the show.